Welcome back to Ozarks Live. It's time for another edition of Dollars and Cents. We go live out to Tom now, who's at the Resource Center. How's it going, Tom? Things are going fine. Now, you've met this gentleman that I'm with before, but we thought we'd kind of talk to him again just to kind of remind you what he does here. Of course, this is Roy Rickstrew, and he is, as you can see the graphic behind me, your disability rep here at the Resource Center. First of all, good to see you again. Likewise, Tom. Second, disability rep. What does that entail for our folks watching? Well, we do Social Security Disability, SSI, children's benefits, widows and widower claims, just any of the programs that are administered by the Social Security Administration. Mm -hmm. We help with as a representative. So help with initial form completion, argue on their behalf, briefs, theories of case, so on and so forth, to try to advance their claim, right. help them get approved, and help them get approved as early in the process as is possible. So this is a lot more than just forms. I mean, you're walking them through the whole process is what it sounds like. Take the claim on as my own, work on it as if it was my own or my family. So we, we try to persecute these, prosecute these things rather, um, to help with the... Um, the arguments along the way to highlight things in the medical records that are beneficial mm -hmm. and try to help Social Security to understand how severe the case is. Let me ask you this. This is, this is something that I've thought. What is considered a disability? Because everybody thinks, oh, I've got a limp. That's not necessarily a disability, is it? Yeah, and it depends. Uh, based on our age, the disability standard changes. First right. significant change is at age 50. We see it change again at age 55. Mm -hmm. Easier to qualify, can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. Social Security understands that employers are less likely to take the time, the effort, the resources to train an older worker something new. So if you're a 55 plus roofer, it doesn't take a whole lot right. in a lot of circumstances. If you've had work history, it's easier to transition to, if you had work history at the desk level, it's easier to transition into a desk job. Uh, your physical condition maybe doesn't matter as right. much. So the rules are a little different depending. Yeah. A lot of people think wheelchairs, walkers, that's not necessarily the case. You can qualify with a whole lot less. Okay, but that's where you come in. You can kind of steer people you know, down that lane, advise them, that right. sort of thing. And today I wanted to talk with folks here. Um, you know, this is the, the infograph. Everyone agrees I'm disabled, but I can't get benefits. Right. And so this is kind of the situation a lot of people find themselves in. Uh, a lot of times we encounter disability determinations when we're talking about long-term or short-term disability mm -hmm. benefits through an employer. It may be through the Medicaid office that may have found you disabled. Could also be a student loan forgiveness will sometimes find you to be disabled. And then of course the VA is the last time that a lot of times folks find disability determinations. True. Social Security is the official federal decision for their program. They're not bound by any of these other determinations. They'll make their own decision. And so they don't necessarily have, give much concern to all these other agencies. So if you are found, for instance, the, the VA has you on disability, that doesn't mean Social Security is going to, or right. vice versa. Right, and a lot of times people find this exposure with the Medicaid program, finding right. them to be disabled. Medicaid. The Medicaid's not binding on the federal government. The Social Security decision is binding on Medicaid, but it's that one-way street. Medicaid does things a little different. They don't use any kind of vocational experts like the Social Security program does. They treat your work history a little different. In fact, one of the Medicaid programs is for the working disabled. And so you're able to have employment and have income, and that's kind of unique to the Medicaid program. Very for, true. Yeah. For those reasons, Social Security doesn't adopt it. Can your, I mean, I, my experience is sometimes you're assigned a percentage of disability. Can this change over time, or is for instance, with Social Security, once it's decided, that's where it is. Social Security is looking at permanent and total disability, so there's not a percentage rating that matters okay. because you have to be precluded from the ability to go back to work entirely for right. Social Security. The VA uses this unique determination. They have some interesting math. They may take a disability rating from a shoulder and a hip and a knee, mm -hmm. add them together, they clear a certain threshold, you become 100% disability for the VA. The thing is, is a bad shoulder and a bad knee a bad shoulder and a bad knee, rather, may not keep you from doing desk work, and Social Security may be concerned about you transitioning to desk work. So for the VA purposes, it matters. For Social Security, not as much. Mm -hmm, but also matters. Bad shoulder, bad knee, if you were a roofer, you're not going to be for able sure. to get back up on a roof. For sure, for sure. So in some circumstances, it'll have a greater impact than in others. Yeah. depending on which disability standard you have to meet. What, what is the question you get most then from people who are coming in looking for your guidance, looking, looking for you to be a representative? What do people come to or, or need to know 
most. Yeah, the most common question is, am I disabled? Do I qualify? Are there benefits available for me? Mm -hmm. And it's a much more complicated question than what a lot of people think that it is. Yeah. It's a combination of medical records, vocational factors, a lot of things play in. Yeah. Uh, the last area here that we have, Tom, is the folks who have long-term and short-term disability insurance. And a lot of times these insurance plans, they look at whether you can go back to your job. Right. And then at a certain benchmark, they look to see if you can go do another job if it's similar in the same department. Uh -huh. And then finally, can you go and do um, you know, any job that's in the national economy? So it's kind of a different varying standard. So Social Security doesn't adopt it either. Okay. The, I, I, I've got to stop you here because we're running out of time. But this is one of the things, first of all, you know, you have free consultations. You can give them a call or, you know, there's the QR code right there. But the thing is, and you may have gotten the same, I'm listening to this and I'm going, all right, I'm a little confused. That's why you find someone as a representative. Yeah, and if you have one of these other agencies that's found you to be disabled, we can yeah. pull the favorable aspects of that out of those decisions, use them to argue on your behalf for Social Security. Last thing, we're doing same-day appointments now. I've carved out some time uh, to meet with folks. If you want to talk to me today, give me a call. We'll set up a time. We'll talk today. All right, Rick. Thanks a lot. Uh, see, I said it wrong. Roy. <laughs> I always want to say Rick Roy. <laughs> nice to Good see you, to Tom. See you again. Take care, guys. Give Roy a call. Back to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tom. Always so many amazing insights on financial advice from the Resource Center. Yes, we need the help. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, Blue Sky.